Okay, so today we are going to talk about um, uh, the beauty of Linty is uh, why we want to use the Linty virus as a gene delivery tool, the advantages, biosafety, and the protocols. So this is an overview. So first I will cover the why use Linty as a gene delivery tool. And then, um, so how the vector is designed and its biosafety. Then uh, how Origin can offer the um, Linty product to serve your Linty needs. Then follows with a detailed protocol, step-by-step -step protocols. So what is Linty virus? So Linty means slow. So Linty virus is a slow replicating retrovirus. Most of the Linty vectors were derived from HIV-1, which is the envelope of the virus, and the genome has two copies of positive RNA. Here are the viral genes. This shows the life cycle of a Linty virus. That's the normal wild type Linty virus, not the Linty vectors. So upon entering into host cells, the RNA genome is a reverse transcribed into double-stranded DNA and then integrated into the host genome. The viral genome is transcribed and assembled into viral particles. So this is a summary uh, slide showing the features of Linty vectors as a gene delivery tool. It's um, high transduction efficiency, reaching to 90 to 100% in commonly used cells. It infects both dividing and non-dividing cells. Another important feature about lentivirus is it can stably integrate into the host genome, which is better for creating stable cells. So the cells listed here, primary cell, epithelial cell, neuronal cell, stem cells, they are known to be difficult to deliver gene by the traditional chemical media transfection. So therefore, scientists have engineered linty vectors to deliver genes into those cells. Next, I want to show you some linty transduction data. So this slide shows the linty virus can infect hard to transfect and primary cells. The linty GFP virus were used to infect intestinal epithelial cells mouse MAF cells, and primary vascular smooth muscle cells. So the gray pictures, those are face contrasts showing the cells on the plate. And the green fluorescence pictures, that's a transduced cells. You can tell clearly that almost 100% of cells were infected, showing that LinkedIn virus is a great gene delivery tool. And this data shows lentivirus can transduce ES cells, embryonic stem cells. The linty GFP virus were used to infect both mouse and human ES cells, and the pictures were taken two weeks after infection. The left panels were face contracts showing the cells, and the, the GFP green cells, those were infected cells. So th this data demonstrated that Linty virus is a powerful gene delivery tool for ES cells. And this is the in vivo transduction data. So Linty GFP vir virus was injected intravenously into adult mice via blood vessels. And uh, one week later, in both liver and spleen, you see very nice GFP expression. And even three months later, you still see very nice GFP, showing that lentivirus had been stably integrated into the host genome. So this data showing that lentivirus can be used in vivo in animal models. So now from the transduction data, you can see that lentivirus is a great gene delivery tool. So now, because lentivirus 
can infect human cells, you may have a concern. Is it safe to use? The most commonly used linty vector currently are second generation and third generation vector. This slide shows the second generation vector. So to make the linty vector safe, the scientists engineered the linty system by splitting the replication essential, the viral replication essential into different plasmids. So in the linty vector, that carrying your gene of interest only contains the LTRs and the packaging signal psi. And the rest of the other viral genes are provided on separate plasmids called the packaging plasmids. So when you do a cold transfection of the lentil vector with the packaging plasmid into cells, those packaging plasmids will provide the essential viral proteins to help this linty vector replicate and package into viral particles. But because the packaging plasma don't have the LTRs and packaging signal, they will not be packaged. So that's why the particles pseudo particles. They are not the wild type particle. They don't have any viral gene in it. So only contains the linty vector, carry your gene of entry to be delivered into your cells. The third generation is even safer. The fine prime LTR is a hybrid, so no need for no viral transactivator TAT. The three prime LTR is a thin LTR because it has a deletion in the U3 region. The thin stands for self-inactivating. This deletion can be transferred to the fine prime end after integrating in, into the host cells. So that makes the virus to unable to replicate. So the deletion in the 3' LTR makes the virus replication deficient. In addition, the third generation system, the packaging plasmid, are provided on three plasmids. Further lower the chance of uh, um, have the viral genes recombine back into the linty vector. So it makes the third generation is safer. So this is summary slides about steps using linty vectors. First, you make a pseudo linty particles, do a cold transfection uh, with your linty vector with a packaging plasma mix into HAC293 cells. And then two days later, you will have the pseudo particles make only contain your lentil vector. So the, and then you use your um, pseudo particle to transduce your cells. So these pseudo particles can still do one round of the infection of your target cells. And it also can reverse transcribe and integrate into the host genome. However, due to lack of any viral genes and also the uh, third generation, the, the deletion in the 3 prime LTR, there's no viral replication. Therefore, also no virus produced. So therefore, although the lentil virus can infect human cell, but no panic is necessary as there's no virus produced in the, um, after transducing the target cells. So what protocols need to follow for safety. So the biosafety level of lentivirus is biosafety level two, which is the same as cell cultures. So you will need the personal protection equipment like a lab coat and the gloves. And the lentivirus need to be handled in tissue culture hood, also called a biosafety cabinet. The biohazard waste decontamination treatment for liquid use bleach and for solid waste, if you can pass through um, bleach and then articles such as the pipettes, you pass through liquid um, bleach and then um, articles. For details, you can follow the NIH guidelines. The take home message is, if you can handle cell culture, you can handle lentivirus. So now I have to show you that 
Lenti Vector is a great gene delivery tool and it's safe to use. So what does Origin offer to serve your Lenti needs? Gene delivery, there are two types. One is the overexpression to del deliver an acidian clone into cells. And another type is gene knockdown. You can deliver an SHRA into cells. And Origin offers both products, Linti ORF and Linti SHRA. The offer is a comprehensive, it's genome wide, and the species are human, mouse, and a rat. For both products, there are two formats. One is plasmid, that we can have uh, the ORF or SHR clone into a Linti vector, and then you will package in your lab. And another format is pre-titered, ready to use Linti viral particles. You can just receive the viral particles and add to your cells. The Linti accessories, of course, uh, the packaging kit. You can use the Linti packaging kit to package uh, Linti virus. And the control particles, that's a serve as a negative control for your uh, Linti transduction. Linti concentrator, you can use to concentrate Linti virus to get higher viral titer. So this is a little comparison between Linti plasmin versus the viral particles. For plasmin, as I mentioned, the first step, you need to get a, a Linti packaging kit and a package of the particles. So the average cost of a Linti packaging kit commercially is about $600. And it takes four to six days to do it. If you want to measure the viral titer, you need to get a titration kit commercially available. Average cost is $600 and takes one to seven days depending on the method you use. In comparison for particles, if you order it, Origin provides as a machine is a pre titer with a titer already measured. You can directly add to your cells you don't need to do any of those steps so you can save your time and money. Now more details about Linti ORF clones. Any gene that's the same ORF is provided in four different Linti viral vector options with or without pure selection. So this is the Linti uh, CMIC-DDK uh, vector that your ORF will be cloned into these cloning sites and it will be in frame with the MIC-DDK tag. So the protein will have a C-terminal, make a DDK tag. You can use the tag antibody if there's no protein-specific antibody available. You can also use the tag to do affinity protein purification. So commonly, anti-DDK antibody bees or anti-flag antibody bees, DDK the same as the flag, are used for protein purification. Origin also offer the anti-DDK resins. So this vector is a C-terminal GFP tagged vector. So you can, um, the protein will be in frame with a um, GFP. You can use GFP to monitor transfection or transduction, viral infection. And uh, you can also um, track the cellular, cellular localization of the fusion protein too. So those are the two ORF, linti ORF clones with a P2A puro. So you can use Pure selection after transducing your cells. If you need a, um, more different tags or selection markers, Origin offers many linty um, cloning vectors that are either different fluorescent proteins or different selection markers, like neomycin, blycidine, and this vector even has uh, is under EFYA promoter. The ORF can be easily shadowed into any of those vectors. So Linti SHRNA, this is a fine prime LTR. This is a three prime LTR. And the sequence between the LTRs will be packaged into viral particles. So you can see there are three major functional elements within the LTR. Of course, the SHRNA is under U6 promoter. And that there's a pure mycin resistant gene. Is there is also a GFP reporter. So therefore, in your transduced cells, you will express your target SHRA, and you can also use a puro to select stable cells. 
your transfected cells, transduced cells will be green. Here, the picture of our SHRNA is a kit. It has five tubes, four gene-specific SHRNAs. They are different. They have different genes individually uh, in the uh, tube. And this is a scramble control, it's an active control. So we offer performance guarantee of at least 70% on higher knockdown for our SHRNA. So next I will show you some validation data. This is a CSF, um, colony stimulated, uh, stimulating factor, or clone in the GFP text vector. And the, the viral particles were packaged using um, Origins packaging kit. You can see very high transduction efficiency, and you see strong, intense, uh, the GFP expression showing the high gene expression too. The CSF is a transmembrane and a secreted protein, and you can see it's localized in the right cellular localization, suggesting that the GFP fuses the CSF going to the right cellular com compartment. So this showing the linti orf expression of different sizes. From lane one to six, you will see the ORF size ranging from 6.5 kb to 2.7 kb. And this is a Western blot with eta DDK antibody. We see very nice expression for all the different sizes. And this data show gene expression at different MOI. MOI stands for mult uh, multiplicity of infection. That's the number of viral particles per cell. MOI1 means there's only one virus per cell, and uh, MOI10 means there are 10 viral particles per cell. And you can see that the higher MOI is, the higher gene expression is. That means if you want to get higher gene expression, you can use a higher MOI. This is showing the effect to knockdown using the Linti SHRNA. As I mentioned earlier that the Linti SHRNA vector between LTRs, it has GFP reported. So all transduced cells will be green. And this is the scramble control SHRNA. And this SHRNA is targeting the GFP in, in the vector. So you can see a significant knockdown of GFP. So now I have covered that Linti is a great uh, gene delivery tool and safe to use, and Origin offers uh, great Linti products. So what about the detailed protocols? Okay, the protocol one is the Linti packaging. So Origin's Linti packaging kit is for the third generation vector. The packaging kit has a three plasmid, and it's a pre-mixed optimized at the optimal ratio for high packaging efficiency. So it's ready for co-transfect with your linti vector to produce high titer linti particles. So this is a diagram just showing that co-transfect your linti vector with a linti packaging plasma into HECA293 cells. And then two days later, you will have the virus released to the super engine and ready to transduce your cells. Quick summary, what you need. You will need uh, the Linti vector, either Linti ORF or SHRNA, and the uh, Linti packaging kit. So Origins packaging kit has uh, contains the transfection reagent. If uh, the packaging kit um, you have don't have it, you, you also need the transfection reagent. And heck to not three T cells not supplied. So this is the Linti packaging detail protocols, step-by-step -step protocols. So D1, seed the HAC293 T cells. For 10 centimeter dish, seed about two and a half million cells. And D2, do a cold transfection. In an Eppendorf tube, you add 500 microliter optimum media, and then you add a five microgram linti vector and a six microgram packaging mix, mix together, and then add a 44 microliter MACTRAN. Mix and incubate at room temperature for 20 minutes. Then add to your cells. And the next day, change the cell culture media. And D4, the virus is ready to be harvested. 
So you harness the supernate, do a brief spin to remove the cell debris, and then filter the supernate with a 0.45 micron filter. For long, the virus are ready to use. For long-term storage, avoid repeating freeze and thaws. So adequate the virus into small volumes and store it in minus 80. If you want to measure viral particles, there are different ways uh, to do it. To just follow the corresponding protocols. So the next procedure is transduction protocol. So day one, seed your target cells. Um, the confluence is about 30 to 50 percent confluence at the time of transduction. So uh, different cell, the size is different, so maybe the cell number may be different too. On the 24-well plate for HEC293, you see about 50,000 cells. And the, at the D2 transduction, um, first decide what MOI you want to use. So MOI, as I mentioned earlier, is the multiplicity of infection. That's the number of viral particles per cell. For example, if you want to to use 10 MOI, and this is the total number of cells seeded in the well. That's the total units of virus you need per well. And this is assumed viral titer is 10 to the seventh units per ml. So uh, you, that's total virus divided by the titer. This is the volume of virus you need to use per cell. So thaw the virus on ice, and then for the 24 well plate, um, per well, you need uh, to make a 500 microliter viral solution in growth media. So which contains the 50 microliter of the virus. You also need to use a polybrain, which increase the transduction efficiency. So the working concentration is 8 microgram per ml. Then you add two cells. The next day, change cell culture media. And day five, two days later, that means 72 hours post transduction, the cells are ready to analyze gene overexpression or gene knockdown. If your lentil contains any selection marker, you can directly split cells and add to um, the growth media. So I have shown you lentil system is a very powerful gene delivery tool for hard to trust fact and the primary cells in vitro and in animals. It is convenient and with a high transduction efficiency, and it has a, it's a simple protocol, and it's safe to use. So next, I will be happy to answer any questions. If there's any question not answered, you're welcome to email our um, PhD scientist at techsupport at origin.com. Well, thank you, Dr. Liu, and I'd like to thank everyone for your attention. I hope you found it informative. Um, this recorded webinar is available, as, as mentioned, through a link in a follow-up email that you'll be receiving, and also on Origin's webinar webpage. So now, we'd love to answer any of the questions that you may wish to ask, and again, please do so by clicking on the question box in the control panel to your right. Assistance. Yeah, it's okay. Okay. All right. So one question is, all right, is it possible to clone the 8KB ORF into lentil vector? Because the uh, lentil genome um, is about 8 to 9KB, and also you will have the promoters, we have a tested to clone 6.5 KB ORF. I think the AKB will be too big. Okay, so one question says that um, because the packaging Plasmid, why are the packaging plasmid are not in the pseudo particles? 
in the okay in the lint vector carrying your gene of interest has the LTRs and the packaging signal. The packaging viral genes those in those vectors there is no LTRs, uh, no packaging signal. Uh, for the those viral genes to be able to package the then it might need a, a couple of recombination back into the lint vector which has the LTR. So normally the um, packaging plasma uh, cannot be packaged because it does not have uh, the LTR and the packaging signal. And one customer is asking if Origin offers CRISPR-Cas9 lentiviral packaging products. We have it. Um, it's uh, in the preparation of uh, launching on the website. Okay. One customer asks, what are advantages and disadvantages of Linti AAV? I believe I do have this slide. Okay, I don't want to confuse two customers, so so I did not show. So this is a com comparison between uh, different um, viral systems, and between the the, the AV that's the, the the genome is a lot smaller. It's only four point five kb. So it, because you also have in the vector you will have promoters, you probably pa package two kb and less. Um, so infection, in fact, non-dividing cells, both the lentivirus and AAV infect non-dividing cells. And the viral tartar similar. Uh, with AMV, most episomal, it does not integrate into the uh, host genome. Okay, one question says that the GFP control always uh, have high higher expression than the um, the target the, the, the gene of interest fused with the GFP. Um, it is normal um, because the GFP is at the C terminal tag. The gene expression of the fusion part depends on the expression level of your target gene and depends on the gene. Uh, the translation efficiency um, and the protein stability is different. So therefore, different genes, the steady state um, level, the protein level will be different. Okay. Do you need to um, centrifuge to concentrate the lentivirus? It depends on your application uh, to work with the cell lines, our um, concentrator, you don't need to um, use ultra centrifuge. Yeah, just to use regular um, centrifuge, it's, it's very fast and convenient. You, you can go to the website and, change, uh, and check the protocol. It's very convenient to use and you only need uh, probably two to three hours to do that. So one question is, after linty transduction, does it mean the cells can be selected at a stable cell line? The answer is, if the linty vector has a selection marker, such as our SHRA always has a pure selection marker, and the linty ORF is also available in pure vector too, uh, you can use uh, the um, antibiotic to select your stable cells. Okay, if you want uh, individual cell colonies, of course you can um, ask the single single colonies, you can just see the very um, at low confluence and let them grow into single colonies and pick the, the single colonies and that's individual cell colonies. Or you can 
use it as a stable pool. There are two ways to do it. One question I believe is how do you usually measure MOI for a batch of viral production? Um, for I think it could be mean that how do you measure viral titer for a batch of viral production? There are different ways. Um, sometimes they they use uh, P24 and um, ELISA kit, and uh, some sometimes people use a PCR. There are different ways, or they they use uh, uh, in fact cells so just. Uh, calculate the colonies. There are different ways to do that. Um, Tom, here you mentioned MOI, maybe uh, you have other questions too. Um, different cell lines, the optimal MOI, you need to find out using the control particles to see which MOI give you a higher transduction efficiency, especially using the GFPs, you can directly see the um, gene expression level. One question is, do you have or, uh, an antibody for GFP for verified transfection by Western blot? Yes, we, we do have a different uh, GFP antibody on our website. Um, I if you have difficulty finding it, you can contact the tech support. Uh, just let us know. Why should we use the third generation virus? Okay. The third generation, um, because it's safer, um, because the three prime, the, the deletion at the U3 region. So after integrating into the host genome, the uh, your target cell, the, the deletion just make the, the virus cannot replicate at all. Even if you have viral genes in the cell, it still cannot replicate because the deletion will be transferred to the fine perm, the LTR, and that's a promoter. That's the promoter for the virus to replicate. So it, it just uh, will not replicate because it's there's a deletion in the uh, fine prime, the, the promoter region. I'm talking too detail, I guess. Well, the key basically just make the um, can, uh, the chance for viral replication even lower. Correct. Yeah, it's a, it's. It's safer, and it doesn't need uh, for the third generation. It also, doesn't need the viral transactivator TAT. For the second generation, you do need that. So, in the uh, which will be provided in the packaging plasmids. Here's a very practical question: How do you store the viral soup after harvesting them? Okay. Yes. Um. To because the virus is enveloped. Uh, um, virus uh, to avoid the uh, frequent freezing thaws, you need to aliquot the viruses and uh, in a smaller volume, and then um, freeze them at a minus eighty. Okay, one question is that. Does the lentivirus integrate in random positions, or do the LTRs direct the insertion in a specific uh, spot? The answer is the, the lentivirus uh, integrate into the genome randomly. So for if you want to specific integrate into a, a, a position or spot in the genome, um, the AAVS1, uh, CRISPR-mediated AAVS1, this one um, transgene insertion, that's uh, the way to go. It will specifically insert at the AAVS1 site in human cells. Um, for detailed information, you can go to Origins uh, CRISPR website. There's a tab, a AAVS1 insertion. Okay. Another question is a very um, detailed question. How many times do you harvest the supernin for the lentivirus, one time or two times? So you can harvest two times. The the titer changes a little bit. Uh, the second time a little bit lower, but you can harvest both. Like uh, the the day four, that's the first time, and you you can add the new new media and, and harvest again at, uh, on day five. Yeah, um, that's a, a following up question with uh, the integration side uh, with the lentil in cells. 
if integration is random, how does silencing of specific region genes work? Um, the, yeah, this is uh, the um, um, problems with the random integration. For most uh, 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 research, uh, it might be okay, but you, if you are concerned, please use the CRISPR mediated AVS1 insertion. Um, so, what is the question? I, th I think what we're talking about here is, is um, how does how is there silencing of specific genes if it's random integration? And I think oh. he, I think the confusion is okay. the introduction of SNHRNA. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. I now, now understand the question. Okay. The question asks if uh, the the, the lengthy integration is, is is random, how can the um, silencing, knocking down of a specific gene. Yes, um, the integration into the genome, then the SHRA will be expressed. And then the SHRA is gene specific. It will target the um, target gene MRA. So the target gene will, will be um, silenced. Sorry, I didn't get that question first. Okay, well, for all the other questions that we didn't get to, um, sorry, but we will follow up for sure with, a, with an email from us. So thank you for your time today, and thank you, Dr. Liu. Um, let us know what you thought about this survey that you'll be getting.